Adam, as always, thanks very much for your time. Always nice to know the strength of the form line from which your horse is coming in. This particular case with Manhattan Cocktail, he's run behind a very useful horse in Heroes Welcome. That is, According to Matthew Stevens, he uh, informs me that this horse is probably a lot better than the maiden plate in which he runs this afternoon. Yeah, he's a nice horse. He has come on from his first run. The 1400 is probably a touch on the sharp side for him. We did have him nominated in the mile, but he drew wide, you know, and uh, having jumped slow on debut, we didn't want to be so far off the pace again. We got a good draw and hoping he jumps a bit better. Um, with racing experience, we're expecting an improved run, but he's a horse that um, probably still could come on from this run, and I think uh, maybe his third start would be one to really look out for. Actually, he's shown us some very nice work at home, Andy, and uh, I was very disappointed with his first run, but I kind of knew my fate when we saddled him because he was just shouting all around and clearly needed gelding. You know, you get them to the races and you find that's the case. Gelded now, probably in need of a race. Um, 1,400, decent draw. I, I think he must be considered for the placing. Yeah, and he's a horse that has one eye. Um, I thought his debut was pretty decent. This will be his first run around the bend, so it's, it's always a challenge. Um, competitive lineup, but I think he's come on a lot and he can be in the money. Well, I saw a horse with one eye win on Met Day, so that's positive. Yeah, it affects some and, and it doesn't affect others. You know, they're, they're pretty confident horses, but you can never be too sure what they're going to do. Super. Then on to the uh, very talented Greek Fire. Yeah, Greek Fire, you know, he um, also, we put him away after his um, debut win and came back and he had a really impressive second, you know, giving the three-old that won the race a lot of weight. Um, you know, he's a horse that we have got high hopes and expect expectations of and I think that he's going to run a good race. He's in a very competitive field, running against older horses, but um, if he's anything that we think he is, he should be very competitive. You know, we're just trying to get him fit so we can put him over some ground. He's, he's obviously he's been well documented that he's been very disappointing ever since his three-year-old uh, campaign. I don't know what to say. You know, he's continued to work well and looks well and you know, just, just hoping that he can run a decent race. Lovely. Then on to one of the two runners for Gaynor Rupert's colours on Saturday, Shatouche in race three. Yeah, Shatusha, um, she's coming off a break and uh, I think she'll be in need of the run. It's the right race to bring her back in before the height of the Joburg season. Just a jet, we know she stays well, we know that she can be pl problematic in the gates, but uh, it is a very competitive lineup. Yeah, this is probably one of the more competitive fields that she's bumped, but she's been really consistent lately and she's enjoying her racing. And you know what, um, she doesn't earn any money in the box, so we're keeping her running while she's running good and let's hope she can be competitive again. Guns and Roses, um, not a run last time. No, look, um, obviously everybody's battled a little bit this season with virus and whatever. Um, she, she's coming to hand, she's really starting to shape up at home now. And uh, I think this type of race, she's, she's highly competitive. Not easy, uh, you know, it looks like a very competitive Phillies race, but uh, yeah, at her best she would definitely be in the shake-up. Excellent. Then on to race number four where the, um, the up-and-coming son of Eightfold Park, the rising legend, runs. He's number nine. Yeah, a very, uh, actually it was an exceptional first run. I mean, he came from six lengths behind the last horse going through about the 600 in a sprint and uh, ran second, albeit a long way uh, behind the winner. But uh, just, to, just to get up and run second was a pretty exceptional run from him. I think this trip will suit him very well. Decent draw and uh, he's really starting to come to hand. So I, I think he's competitive. Difficult race to, you know, to win, but I, I think uh, if it goes well for him, he'd definitely have a chance. Super. Then Arctica, um, very game, very consistent, just needs a little bit of luck. Yeah, Arctica has been in good form lately. I think if we had a better draw, we'd be super, super competitive in this field. From that draw, we're going to need a hell of a lot of luck. But if Lady Luck's on our side, and you know, we also got Wash on our board, he's a great jockey to overcome a bad draw. So if you can overcome the draw and get him sort of in a decent position without overusing him in the race, I think he could be a big runner on the day. That's exactly how I saw it. Um, with Aldanza, obviously every race she goes in now must be black type. That's our um, goal is to try and get bold black type on her. Um, the Phillies race is starting in March, uh, what we're aiming her for, but uh, I won't say it's a run to keep her going. She's pretty fit and uh, handicap's a handicap whether you take on the boys or not. So uh, um, if Roger Smith's done his homework and her weight is right, well, she should be competitive. Bit of a tricky draw for her, so, but she got gate speed, so I think she'd be fine. Starrett City, he's actually a killer out at the weights. Um, 
but it's his favourite course and distance, and I, I really do feel that uh, over a mile uh, on the stand side track, you know, he, he probably finds a length or two on his on his normal form. So I'm just hoping that's the case here. I, I, I think he's 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 got a chance. You know, he, he's pretty good. Yeah, Farik's been well prepped for this race. He's a he's a very honest compa campaigner. This is his third run after rest and drawn well. I think he's going to be very competitive. Secret captain had the one run for the yard. Um, he ran a nice race running on the whole way. We just we just learning we learning with him at this stage. Um, so it's hard to put my head down on, on how he's going to run. But drawn won. Everything's in his favour as well, and he should should be right there. Yeah, well, on the subject of draws, Ariel Secret hasn't really drawn too well, but he was so impressive last time out, and although he does meet a very strong field, I'm sure he'll be running at them and hugely competitive, I would think. Yeah, he does uh, jump from a bad draw, but um, with in mind, this is his prep run for the Guineas, um, hoping that he definitely gets into that race. Um, and yeah, you know, this is being his prep run, we just hope everything goes smoothly and he comes out of the run well. Yeah, obviously... It's so well documented that Lingon's run wasn't his run. Um, he came and improved that in his next start in a handicap. This is uh, back to his own company and back to his own age group and, and, and feature race company. It's another test for him, but he's doing well at home. He's got the draw. So everything's in his favour again, um, you know, but he's got to come and produce the goods on Saturday. But we really can't complain about his prep for this race. Yakin came out and won a very impressive race. Um, he looks like a smart horse. Probably not the most ideal thing coming back in trip being by, by Tia Filia, but you know, if he, he's got a touch of class about him and if he can run in the first three, you know, it'll be a really positive, uh, a really positive run looking forward to the Guineas and the Classic and, and races like that, that'll be right up his alley. So, you know, we just, we're just looking for a good run from him. Uh, so David Baird's a bit of an up and down horse. He, he really does work well in the mornings and only sometimes reproduces it. His cape run definitely can put a line through that. Um, just went a little too fast, but uh, he's come back from Cape Town fit and well. This is a good distance for him, I think, and hopefully Randall can just get him to relax and he can, he can finish off nicely. Okay, then on to San Furman. She gets a trip that uh, probably she'd be more effective over, but having said that, she was absolutely desperately unlucky. I was speaking to one of my colleagues who's a real fundy at form, and Matthew Stevens says, boy, oh boy, she couldn't have had more bad luck in that last start. Yeah, I think, think sometimes you think uh, in the sprints, uh, little as can go wrong as possible because it's a shorter race, but um, it's always bigger fields in those races. And, and fortunately for us on that day, we didn't have much luck and she found a lot of trouble. And Lyle did well to get through it and get her to run where she did. So she came out of the run well. Uh, we're also jumping from a bad draw. I think the main thing is let's hope Grant can get her nice and relaxed and settled early on in the race and she can finish this race the same way she did her, her debut start. Um, and if she does do that, I think she could be a really competitive runner. With in mind, um, there are some good sorts. Fish River won it really impressively last time out and probably one that we all got to have respect for. Mr. Lecoq sources are always improving. But uh, this filly is on the up. Yeah, taking the piece, she had her first run back in the, in the feature sprint. Um, she ran a poor race. You know, we weren't expecting that, obviously. We were expecting a good run, and we were going to run there and then in this race. But after that run, we were left scratching our heads because we could find nothing wrong with her. So we just decided to run her again just, you know, to see where we actually stand with the filly, and, and she won, which is what we expected in the first run back. So it's a, it's a little bit of uh, a lot of racing on top of each other, three runs in about three or four weeks, which is not ideal. But she's a nice filly. She's, she's come out of it all well. She's fresh and happy. Um, it's a tough field, but we need to know where we stand with her as well. Um, Fish River seems like a quality horse as well. She needed her first run back, and then her second run she won nicely. Um, she's in a good space. Like I said, it's a competitive field, and it's hard to know where we stand with our, our own age group, but that's why we're running on Saturday, to find out. Lovely. Then uh, three competitive runners in the ninth race, uh, not least of all in a million, Cess and yours, Tapanzi. Yeah, to, to Penzi, you know, he's a horse that he actually really doesn't put it in at home. Uh, he, he actually races himself fit. So as much as we can run him, we try to run him and then he sort of improves with each race. Um, Cess, you know, on his run to Dom Dromedaris um, in the Jockeys International, on that type of run, you'd make him a massive runner yeah, uh, if he has to reproduce that type of start. Uh, and he's got jumping from a good draw, which he hasn't done in a, quite some time. Uh, yeah, and I think if he puts the right foot forward, he could be a runner. In a million, also meeting Dromedaris on the day he lost him on objection, bed off at the weights, and um, 
on his run the other other weekend, he's come out of the run well. He's stripping fitter. Now his third run after a rest. So uh, one that I think we should pay a little bit of attention to. Could be a runner. Okay, this handsome fella behind us, Pagoda, second in the derby. This is his kind of trip, and he's been showing this all along. Look, he, he's a very, very useful little guy on his day. Two four fifty, I think, is is his game nowadays. Um, very good run in the Summer Cup, um, and then after the London News, he gave a couple of coughs. So you know, once again, it's just the weather and you know the way things were going at the time. You've got to put a line through the last run. Clearly, much better than that. Um, I, I think he'll be. His competitive self again on Saturday. Kilrain, decent stayer, and Smart Mart. I think you can draw lines straight through his last start. Travelled wide, he's better than that. 100%. You, you know, you can't, in a staying race, you can't give away ground like that. So definitely put a line through him. Um, he's, a, he's an honest horse, and I think he'll be right there again on Saturday. He's got a good draw for once, and I think he'll have things his way. Uh, Kilrain is his first time going the distance. I mean, on looks and on form and paper, it looks like he should be tailor made for it. Um, he's got the jaw as well, and I'm really looking forward to the run because I think if he stays, he's a massive runner. And then finally, to put the lid on the day in race 10, Schengen Gal. Schengen Gal, you know, she's a horse that's, um, that's limited and we didn't really think much of her, but uh, it's either she's really well within herself or she's just taken time. She's doing exceptionally well at home and at this point, and um, we probably ran over a little bit too far last time out. We brought her back in trip, um, and if she runs a competitive type of race, we will be happy. Yeah, she ran a good race first time out. Um, she's made good natural improvement from that. 1800 should be no problem. You know, it's, it's another competitive maiden, but we expect her to be right there. Babe Paley and Sunshine Silk, you expressed a measure of confidence about Babe Paley last time. The two fillies work is very close together at home. Um, I, I was slightly disappointed with Babe Paley's first run. I thought she would finish closer. Um, but I think this trip's going to suit her much better. Um, she'll obviously know a lot more about it now. And um, definitely not out of it. And, you know, you mustn't just look at it and say, oh, second pick in the stable sort of thing. She, she's, she's pretty good. And if it goes right, she, she would be a forward sort of a runner there. Always, I've always thought quite a bit of her. And the same, I mean, Sunshine Silk, I thought would be a winner probably two or three runs ago. Um, Penny has, well, I think it's dropped. She was a bit stiff, I thought, at the Vile last time. She just got beat. But um, she's going to get it right one of these days. And, uh, you know, the favourite there, probably a worthy favourite, but she's proven herself beatable before. Just hope it's one of mine. Yeah, and of course, uh, I, I have to agree with your sentiments about uh, Babe Paley and Sunshine Silk be second choice because you know that Gunter Roggeman's a much better rider than Marco van Rensburg. Yeah, well, Marco, I'll be the first one to admit it. <laughs>